and welcome to Scarlet Serpent Readings. Thank you so much for joining me in this special collaborative pick a card reading um, with Lotus the Sage. I'm very excited to be doing this with her because she has just um, like a, a vibrant, grounded, magical energy to her readings and she's just a joy to talk to. So um, thank you again, Lotus, for doing this collab with me. and. Um, I also want to apologize because I know this was delayed because I had this is my second um, time shooting this video just problems extracting and uploading so hopefully this works out um, but thank you for your patience um, both for you and Lotus for <laughs> um, yeah being really patient and flexible so um, we're going to be looking at magic within you and how you're using that magic so lotus the sage is looking at what is the hidden magic within you and then in this reading with me we'll look at how you're using that magic to conjure change in your life um, so i'd suggest watching her reading first um, just so you know what magic you'd be working with and yeah um so i'm just gonna jump in we have three piles pile one Oh, this is going to be hard to see, isn't it? Oh. It's a yellow golden dog thing. I think it's a lion. So that's a lion for pile one. Pile two, yeah, I think this is a dog. A blue dog. These are little trinkets I got from moving my grandmother. Uh, she's like, here, have these. Like, okay, I'll probably use them for this. So blue dog for pile two. And then pile three looks like a rhino. Yeah, this is not helping. There we go. A rhino for pile three. And I'll have the images um, probably on the screen right now. And yeah, again, um, don't forget to check out Lotus's part of the collaboration, um, especially because I think it's it would be nice to know what the hidden magic is before using it um, to conjure change in your world. But... Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'll see you at your reading. Hi, Pile One. If you chose this yellow lion, this is going to be your reading on uh, how are you conjuring change in your life. And again, if you missed the intro, this is a collaboration between myself and Lotus the Sage. And I'd suggest watching her reading before this one, just so you know what magic is hidden within you and then um this reading is more based on how you utilize that magic to make changes in your life um so i have an oracle card here and this card represents why why you want to make this change or why this change has to happen in your life so let's take a look at that first evolution i think that's self-explanatory <laughs> We'll get probably more context why, but uh, this change is, I think, r reflecting the awareness of what's within you, the magic within you, and um, the power that you wield at all times, you know? So I think in this case, it'd be more of a change of how you view yourself within the world around you that you're not really owned by it or kind of a slave to circumstances that you have an active role in making that change and that starts with um, the energy within you and um, feeling like you're deserving of the best life possible. I think that mindset would be a big uh, part of the herald of change, I guess. Um, so that would be why, why you're conjuring this change is so that you can evolve and your situation evolves and um, I think you've already learned the lessons there are to learn in your current circumstance um, whether that be with relationship patterns or um, living situation or lifestyle I think this is just a new phase for that and then we have the emperor so that makes sense straight away um, what change are you conjuring in your world? I think this is more of stepping in your own power. Um, bringing the, it's almost like, 
the awareness of this 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 magic you're bringing it out and you're sharing it with others and maybe it was hidden because um, you felt you couldn't share it you couldn't share the side of you or um, you might have had maybe even a negative um, perception of I'm, I'm gonna say divine masculine energy specifically with orange um, exerting control and authority within yourself and maybe that that sense of I almost want to say like structure is felt stifling before but I think as you evolve you're recognizing um, the beauty really of patterns and structure and organization and it's that that's what grounds um, really chaos into the physical chaos being like um, just ideas and dreams and creativity and bringing it down and working with it physically um, and I think you're seeing yourself more as an author an authoritative figure not well kind of like a qu king or a queen where um, you carry yourself in that elevated way and that elevation comes from um, just knowing how much you've already changed and um, knowing how much influence you have in the external world yeah okay let's get another card and we have the four of cups as to what change you're conjuring and then ten of cups maybe one more then three uh, the empress so you have the empress and the emperor I think for a lot of you, this has to do with family. Um, feeling like you're a part of a family. Feeling um, secure within a group. <laughs> I'm thinking of branching out with, with this card. Branching out and connecting, because I think part of this is uh, you've been in solitude for a while. And so I just find it interesting that both the emperor and the empress are in the same reading. Wildly different color palettes, right? I did see the emperor first, and I do think the emperor is you, actually, regardless of gender. Um, but then we have the four of cups and the ten of cups. And you'll notice that um, it's really a combination of the empress and emperor energies. And this is kind of like the final result of putting those two two parts, two pieces together. If you could see that. There we go. Like just the the family and warmth and the rainbow of colors. Uh, it's grounded. It's safe and secure, and yet. There is an emotional harmony um, that comes with feeling and acknowledging the heart space and desires and um, following the, the things you daydream about and encouraging the people around you to do the same thing, is to do a little more than just daydream, kind of what can you do physically to make that happen? That's part of... Um, I don't know what makes that magic hidden is like what actions can you take to bring that forward you know um, I don't know I'm thinking of like physics or something there's every action has a reaction but without any action nothing is happening <laughs> that sort of thing and it's almost as if uh, as you're more aware of this inner magic of in this case, I, I would say it feels more like um, your magic has to do with just power and um, a presence that you have. It's uh, strong leadership and um, an ability to draw attention to yourself. That's You would have to see, of course, um, Lotus is part of the reading, but that feels like 
an energy that's present here is um, kind of acknowledging that like flowers that grow towards the sun, people just kind of <laughs> uh, look towards you. Um, you might notice that they copy you in a lot of ways and it's because um, they see you as someone who knows what they're doing and um, they see you as a, a shining light and I think if this isn't a relationship that you're looking for this could definitely be balancing those two energies out within yourself the emperor and empress nurturing caring receptive energy um, creative energy too really and then um, organizing that creativity into something practical um, taking leadership and really th that emperor energy is the one that obviously in a family you need both the emperor and empress um, but kind of there has to be like a structure um, and a foundation for growth within any household really and i think that's something you've really wanted is some sort of stability some foundation in more ways than one not just with a family but it it helps it's kind of like i could imagine you may be thinking or saying i've never really felt like i've known a home you know like a place where i could really be safe in expressing who i am and thinking freely and just I was just gonna say eating <laughs> it's kind of a, a strange thing but like just eating whatever I want and not have commentary oh my god the burden of commentary you know <laughs> it's like, oh you look like this today or why are you eating that or I think after a while you've had it with that and even if it's positive you just don't want to hear the constant background noise of unwanted opinions and I think that's something that you're um, stepping away from and changing and I think part of this emperor is just telling the people around you um, you can keep that to yourself because I'm not listening anyway but <laughs> um, anyway we have clarification for these cards as to what change you're conjuring right now we have the queen of cups And then hmm. I think this is the magician. I think I had messed this up before, but anyway, the magician. And interesting that we have this card for a magic based reading. Um, but really, it's wielding the power, wielding the power that you have, using tools um, to bring that out and and as I said, because it's right under the four of cups, when you're bored or unfulfilled emotionally, um, taking action on the things that you do daydream about, because I do think there's something there. Although, um, kind of, sometimes emotions can drain creativity. I guess like, um, when you're in a bad pla bad place, but a place that's emotionally draining, it also drains your creativity. So that might be something that you're looking to change is your environment that might be just exhausting emotionally so that you can finally create something that you want. It's interesting that we have the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Cups uh, describing each other. I think part of this might be um, you feel like there's a time limit to making this happen. <laughs> the nine of swords and jupiter and it's interesting because um you have an expansive energy and that's part of what evolution is telling me with this right evolution this expansion i said growing branching out that's spreading but the thing to be mindful of and really this is the only swords card in the reading is your mind and how that expands into your experience and that trickles out um, but it starts within you um, and then we have the Nine of Pentacles underneath the Empress. So, really with these three, Queen of Cups, Empress, and the Nine is um, 
and I say this, I think, pretty often, putting yourself first, nourishing yourself to the fullest, um, and not allowing others to try and bring you down, try and manipulate you, and it's that kind of grabbing life by the horns. Is that how the expression goes? Life by the horns? I think so. It sounds right, but... Um, it's almost like you're being the chariot now and you're taking control of your life um, however you can. And the best way you can is um, kind of gauge your emotional experience, your mind, and do things that ease the mind and lighten your heart. Um, and there's a momentum that would go with that, I guess. Look, we have love. Oh, that's sweet. This is the card. This is the card that represents how you could make this change happen smoother. Look, right, right underneath the deck, too, we have strength. That foundation I was mentioning with the roots here. The love opening the heart. And that's what really this, this queen is about. Loving the self and doing things that you love, and making that a priority again. Um, but also guarding that, guarding your desires. You know, people will naturally... <laughs> it's kind of sad, uh, but... When people are unhappy, they want to spread that unhappiness sometimes. If they're in a miserable situation, they don't want other people to be... Not always, but... Um, just recognize that type of person and protect yourself against them because they're, uh, again, emotionally draining and that will drain your creativity and your ability to um, physically experience uh, not only the magic within you but your dreams, the things that you catch yourself dozing off into and making that more of a real reality so you don't have to doze off. You could just be, I don't know. That's it. I think that's the reading. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support, support and patience. Um, and if you haven't already, um, go ahead and check out Lotus the Sages, part of the reading um, or the collab, because I'm always curious as to how the, the readings go together. But otherwise, yeah, I'll see you in the next reading. Take care. Hi, Pile 2. If you chose this dog, I think, this is your reading on what change um, are you conjuring in your world, in your life. And um, if you missed the intro, this is a collaboration with Lotus the Sage, who is looking at the hidden magic within you. And this reading is really expanding on that. Um, how you're using that hidden, ma hidden magic to conjure change in your life. This card represents why you want to make this change or why this change is happening in your life. So let's take a look. Connection. So the card is blue, um, and it, it kind of ties to pile one already. Um, getting a sense of above and below Um, I think for this pile, it might have to do with this change is, you're conjuring this change um, because you are more aware of your subconscious and the power of your shadow in influencing your reality, making your reality. It's kind of like... If your conscious mind was the blueprint to like a building or something um it's almost like the workers and the tools are the subconscious actually building that thing physically into reality but let's take a look um what change are you conjuring in your world but blue is definitely a color for you <laughs> What change are you conjuring in your world? So much movement. <laughs> I 
maybe you felt stuck um, and you just want to move and I think with connection now with these cards here I think part of this connection has to do with travel connect connecting with the planet connecting with um, understanding yourself more through experiencing different places and people let's clarify these real quick I don't know why I want to clarify them all at once I usually take my time but I guess that's part of the energy, right? It's like usually I, I could do a card at a time. I just want to see everything now. There's, it's, yeah, it's like when when there's that pent up energy, when it's let go, it just goes flying, you know. And that's really what I'm getting here. Um, but at the end of it all, we go back to the hermit, and it kind of processes everything. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, so what change are you conjuring in your world? We start with the Five of Swords. So this would represent solitude here, isolation. This represents the chariot uh, in reverse is um, either a lack of balance, and I could see that reflection here where maybe your conscious mind and your subconscious want different things. And and I think part of the magic that you have to work with is aligning those and balancing those out. And really not necessarily rejecting the subconscious, but understanding why there might be a certain resistance to the things that you consciously want, um, where that comes from, kind of tracing back the steps and the mindsets that go with that. Um, but then after that, we have the Eight of Wands and then Judgment. And these two have similar imagery, actually, with the people. Just there's fire, movement towards the light, movement, movement, lots of movement. And I think you're meant to travel, meant to express uh, the things that you see, um, meant to share. This is very strong um, fire energy some air as well and then underneath the five of the swords you have the page of swords i think with those swords and there's birds here too um that's this part of you that really wants to move. And I think the first change that you're making is, is within your mind. I think you realize um, how much you hurt yourself with the way you think sometimes. And kind of taking these thoughts that kind of seem to come out of nowhere and tracing them back or not associating yourself with those thoughts, that's where you'll start to flip this over into move, movement. Because I, I think that um, the thought processes are what's causing you to feel stuck. You know, oh, I can't believe I'm still in this situation, or I, I don't know when I'll be able to move forward or get this job or I don't know how lots of I don't knows <laughs> um, and slowly with lots of focus and concentration um, weed out those those thought patterns because I think again here the magic, and you'll have to, of course, watch Lotus as part of the reading, but it has to do with shadow, dark energy, actually. And when the dark energy is against you, obviously you won't be able to see where you're going. Um, and maybe part of this is finding power in not seeing where you're going instead of being afraid of moving when you can't see you know, a path ahead. We have the Two of Pentacles underneath the um, chariot, and that just um, confirms that balancing aspect. 
um, that there are two different sides of you that are out of balance. That's also reflected by the connection card here, right? That when they're, when these two things are balanced, there's this shape that's formed. I think that's like a magical shape. <laughs> I mean, I don't actually know, but that shape is the, the shape of creativity or something, or manifestation, but it only comes when it's in balance. And I think that's really the first part of this reading is um, the change that you are making is a change internally. And I know this reading is supposed to be, what change are you uh, conjuring in your world, your external world, but um, for this specific pile, it has a lot to do with your mind and your shadow and um, taking time to understand this subconscious, almost automatic side of you that um, you feel you might not have control over, but instead of trying to control it, maybe just um, spend time understanding it and um, forming a relationship with it so that um, you could use this shadow energy to um, move, really. Because <laughs> I think both, well, all of you, every part of you wants to move very strongly. And then we have the Page of Pentacles with the Eight of Wands. And it just feels like very young, exciting energy. You might enjoy uh, just discovering like a new park or a new forest or just a new place. It doesn't have to be big, but I think practicing that um, wherever you live is a great idea. Kind of allowing yourself to wander, even if it's driving down a different street that you've never been in. I think that excites you and that would help you um, step into the energy of um, discovering new places, new things, uh, new. You, you really want to be around fresh ideas, fresh um, visual stimuli, that, that sort of thing. That's really important to you. Same thing with music um, or movies or TV shows. Um, I don't think you like watch. I mean, there's usually phases of like, I'll just watch the same thing or whatever. Um, but I think when you allow yourself to expand on that, you, you gain energy. And then finally we have the just, I was going to say justice judgment card with the hermit. Isn't this interesting? You could, oh Lord, if I could do this, it's like they're going to the light, to your light through meditation. I want another oracle to describe these two because I just find it really interesting. But uh, um, in a nutshell, I think that you will understand yourself a lot more when when you travel, you'll, you'll understand, uh, I don't know, there's like this awakening that comes from movement. And then when you move, you exert the energy, the extra energy, and then you'll able to sit still and kind of process everything you've seen and experienced. And it's, that's part of the balance too. Um, movement and stillness. And I think you might've been more still than you'd like to be. And th there's like this counterbalancing energy that might be overwhelming right now for you. Um, we have attachment and combustion. I think this, this has to do why, with why you're changing or why you want to bring forth this change. Is a, a very strong stuck feeling. And I've mentioned this before, kind of like the friction and... That, that leads to a spark of inspiration. So if that's what you're in, if that's where you're in right now, the change that's made is that spark. And that spark comes from um, suffering, honestly. 
it's like it's a weird thing to say but i guess for this reading it's almost like joy is as like a um oh i lost it darn it <laughs> maybe i'm not supposed to say it then never mind i'm not gonna say that but um well, it's like experiencing joy is almost the consequence of understanding suffering. I mean, the joy almost becomes that much brighter and more satisfying if you had to work for it. Um, like, if you could teleport to the top of a, a mountain peak or whatever with a beautiful view, you would just wake up, you teleport there, and then, like, it would it would be casual. I don't know how else to say that. Um, but it, when you hike and you go through the effort of walking and, and it's almost like the reward comes with exerting effort, if that makes sense. So this path you're on is part of the joy. And I think that mindset switch might help out with where you're at. Cause I think for a lot of you, well, that's why you're making this change. Uh, manifesting this change using your magic um but i think that'll make the time it takes to have that change happen uh, a little smoother is knowing that um wh wh wherever you're at right now um is part of it is part of how good it's part of how good it's going to feel when you are where you want to be or when you're moving speaking of bringing this change quickly making this change happen smoothly i guess um i'm just gonna draw an oracle card saying how um you could what will enhance this change what will enhance the magic that's behind the change that you want to create ancestors this is interesting we had the two of pentacles and the page of pentacles down here So I think actually for as much as you want to move and for as much energy that you have, grounding is going to be what actually gets things moving. Grounding is extremely important. Connecting to trees, maybe green is a color that um, will soothe your soul <laughs> at a deep level. But I'd say take the time to speak with your ancestors, connect, or just sit in meditation. You know, it doesn't have to be a mediumship session every every day or anything like that. But just even something as simple as sitting and thinking about where your ancestors have been or thinking about the support they have for you, um, seeing them as a tree, rooted, grounding, and healing energy and just being in that energy um will relax you and make you um i don't know it'll just open your mind a little bit and maybe even balance the um conscious and subconscious self so that you could move to the mountains um see the world a little bit and understand yourself um at a deep level at a deeper level i said that weird but I think I'm going to end the reading there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those things that people do. Um, and don't forget to check out Lotus the Sage's part of the reading, um, if you haven't already. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll end it there. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Please do all those things. I'm just repeating myself at this point. <laughs> I hope to see you in the next reading. <laughs> Take care. Hi, Pile 3, and welcome to your reading. Um, I think this is a rhino. Uh, let's see if you can see that. But yeah, if you chose this reading, uh, this pile, um, this is going to be your reading on what change you were conjuring in your world using the hidden magic that um, you discovered through um, Lotus the Sages part of the reading. Um, as part of the collaboration. So if you haven't seen that, I suggest watching that first, although of course, do what you feel. <laughs> um, so this card that I have, let's see. Okay. Um, represents why 
this change is being manifested, um, why you're conjuring this change. And I just saw it and it's healing. So I'll just leave that there and we'll, we'll find out um, what change you're conjuring. But the why is healing, so that's interesting. What change you've got there. Five of Pentacles. The Magician. The Queen of Wands. And the Strength card. Hmm. I mean, the readings are usually connected in some way. Here I think the healing has to do with your sense of self, self, self worth. <laughs> um, and that's the change that you're conjuring in your world is your place within it and the confidence that you have. Um, I think you've been around people who tried to put you down, um, try to belittle you, condescending, Co-workers, family, friends, or even a voice in your head that comes from uh, a past loved one or something like that. You're finding your strength again, and that's really the change that, um, again, it feels like more more of this, this, this change that you're conjuring is for you, and I think the world is just going to reflect and respect you as... A powerhouse <laughs> very powerful energy oh let me show you the cards I'm just staring at them okay so we have five of Pentacles two figures walking away from a shadow figure feeling small notice how much bigger with the magician, how much bigger, how much more power they're wielding, you're wielding at the top of a mountain as opposed to the bottom of like this valley or whatever. You're at the top. Notice the difference again between this card and the Queen of Wands. Again, near the top of a mountain with a serpent. Shout out to the serpent. <laughs> but wielding this energy, talking to it, talking to... Um, a creature of power and creation of life. You might be finding new life within yourself. And then we have the strength card. Again, look how much bigger this figure is to these two at the bottom. And I do think what's interesting is that there's two figures here and two figures here. So one, there's healing that comes with a pair. So this could be... Um, for some of you, relation like in general, just relationships, specifically love romantic relationships, um, and noting the dynamic that you've had with your past partners and how they've treated you and how it just feels like they might have tried to make you feel small or um, put you in a box of this is the role you're meant to play in this relationship. Um, and I think maybe, although you might want to be in a relationship, I think this time is about you being big and being independent and alone and enjoying that, you know. And then I think when you fully understand the depth of your power, um, your strength, you'll know when someone's trying to make it small again. I think it'll be more apparent this time. And that's something to take note of. And I think that's part of what's being healed is how you, you view yourself and... Um, Again, kind of like the influence that you have um, on your environment. Because I do feel like, I don't know, these people try to make you second-guess yourself. And 
and this this yeah feels more romantic than anything else i'm not picking up work environment or anything like that although that can be the case of course where you know you almost feel like you have to drag someone else along even though you you know when there's let's say like a manager who clearly has no idea what they're doing and they ask you but they don't they also kind of talk down to you just to feel like they're in a position of power there's like a hierarchy but um it goes straight to their head i can give you an example but i don't want to i don't want to talk badly about anyone so i'm not going to do that <laughs> but you know you know it, uh, an example uh, it's kind of an out there example but like if you have you know someone who like goes to the gym two weeks in they're wearing clothing that's like three sizes too small and they're just talking about working out non-stop and I'm just like can you chill out with that you know like this ah uh, it's immature energy that you've had to deal with let's just put it that way immature energy uh childlike and because they're childlike um they'll almost be bullies but they're not themselves adults so they'll condescend to overcompensate for their behavior it's difficult energy that you've i think had to deal with and i think um again on your own you're just regaining that confidence regaining that power that others have tried to take from you and um i think part of the magic that you wield is um almost shamanic in nature just because of the animals that these figures are working with the elements so you could be someone who has like an elemental practice or should consider you know working with the elements or you might be someone who notices if you take a deep breath like a really deep breath and you're outside you'll notice that the wind responds to you or the trees dance with you or you know um you're feeling a little confused and it just so happens to be cloudy outside you'll notice this almost reflection of how you're feeling with the world around you um that might i mean that's going to just be for some of you but you'll notice that you do have an influence on your external environment and as you care for yourself i think manifestations will become more apparent um it's not like you become a better manifester it's more of recognizing the subtleties and intricacies that come with manifesting and it's just more of an awareness so that you're not accidentally manifesting another one of these partners that you've had enough or these friends that or family that I've, you know that you've outgrown in other words we have the 6 of cups the ace of pentacles serpents showing up twice this is a, this is my pile <laughs> ouroboros serpent energy so lots of creativity lots of um like kundalini energy could be like that clearing within you we have the eight of pentacles with creativity and i'd mentioned uh creativity with um the serpent energy again and this is right underneath the serpent and you could even see how um through your art you might be channeling your your spirit guides your spirit team something like that through through your work and i think that's why you're alone is so that you could express yourself somehow without being held back and i do think um if the relationship part of what i was saying with partners doesn't resonate this is probably family could be sister brother or just a friend that you had who kind of look at this the, these figures are growing in size but they're still not big but it's kind of like uh, your mind has maybe warped that past trauma into a mindset and it's worth looking into it's worth meditating on it and um cuz th there's like if i had another camera i i try to work with that setup and it's if you saw if you saw the setup i had it's a nightmare. Oh my gosh. I need someone to help me with like the electronics part cuz it's 
way over my head. But I only mention that because there's a very clear divide in the cards. Like, there's these two. Uh, limited mindset. There's something about the past here, and this is definitely what needs healing, without a doubt, really. And this is why the change is happening. The change is a result of your recognition of uh, kind of this event, really. And the magic that you have is elemental, it's physical, um, it's manipulating, it's sh shamanic, I want to say. Uh, but then there's this side of the reading where there's just a lot of positive momentum and change and power with all these cards. And I think that just goes to show that once this this past trauma or... Uh, even like a bully it could be a small thing, but it's still there and it's still in your energy And I think it's still preventing you from fully realizing um, Your power, you know what I'm thinking of? If you if you know what I'm talking about leave a comment and I like pull a card for you and post it, but I, I don't think so um, there's a character in X-Men called the juggernaut right um he was in i think he was in two movies and they were both kind of horrible but um the juggernaut is not a mutant he gets his power from sidorak and but he only uses a small fraction of that power but he's immensely powerful like um it takes probably like the whole team to stop him <laughs> and he can't be stopped that's why he has the name once he starts moving but he doesn't utilize his power fully. In fact, Doctor Strange uses the bands of Sidorak in Infinity War when they're trying to get the gauntlet from Thanos. But anyway, I'm getting too much into that. He only uses a fraction of his power, and he's incredibly terrifying. And um, he doesn't wield the power in any kind of intelligent way. So um, I'm just thinking of that. I'm thinking of you as someone who has an immense power but isn't wielding it fully just because maybe they don't understand or maybe you don't understand the full depth of your abilities or your power um and so that's meditation isolation but you time that's why this all of these cards to the right of me are just one person in each card and that's because you're studying yourself um that's the change, is fully understanding you and what you can do and what you're capable of. Um, what change you're conjuring is whatever you want. I don't, I don't, there's no... <laughs> Your life can be as adventurous and, look, colorful as you want it to be with the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands is a commanding energy. This is like, uh, I think this is Mars and Aries. Could be wrong. But it reminds me of the magician. Like, these two go together. It's you wielding the paintbrush and the tools and um, making life as magical as you can, as you want. And I think there's just uh, this lingering part of you that suggests that you don't have the tools that you need and that's simply not true so um, that's part of the change is really using the gifts that you have this, this hidden magic using it fully um, working with your spirit team but specifically for this pile with, um, with spirit animals and shamanic energy again I think that will be very very helpful on your journey um it's kind of like an artist who doesn't know the fundamentals of drawing with a pen pencil um uh, doesn't know how to draw shapes or put things in perspective but wants to get copic markers or like whatever fancy tools there are or get digital but without the basics their art won't be exactly what they want it to be. So even if you don't have all the tools that you think you want or that you think you need, you could work with the tools that you have and develop the skills so that when you do get 
the other tools, um, you'll have a really solid foundation for your creative whatever. We have share wisdom. This is how um, the change will come faster. And I think this, with the context of the reading, is um, it has to do with confidence again. It's, it's kind of like as you share your experience, your um, maybe art or, um, again, yeah, experience with other people, you'll, you almost get, like, validation from others that um, you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, um, and you are a powerhouse to be respected. And that'll help you get away from, from this this mindset away from this and towards this much bigger much more powerful uh, much more capable uh, so yeah I'm going to end the reading there hopefully you enjoyed it please like, share, subscribe don't forget to watch Lotus the Sage as part of the reading um, I'm curious as to how they connect and I want to thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in the next reading. Take care.